single bundle augmentation for a partial tear of the anterior cruciate ligament. Patient presented as a 23-year-old male complaining of six months of right knee pain. He was playing in a soccer game when someone fell onto the lateral aspect of his right leg. He has a history of an MCL tear and felt that the pain was initially similar to the MCL tear. He endorsed swelling and pain but was able to bear weight. The patient endorsed pain primarily posteriorly as a dull achy sensation which was worse with kicking or stepping. He endorsed occasional swelling, denied locking, catching, or instability. On physical examination, he had range of motion from 0 to 120 degrees with no effusion. He was non-tender to palpation at the lateral joint line, but did have tenderness to palpation at the medial joint line. He had 1 plus laxity with valgus stress at 30 degrees, but was otherwise stable to varus stress. He had a negative McMurray's, negative anterior and posterior drawer, with an equivocal pivot shift and Lachman examination. His initial radiograph showed well-maintained joint space with no signs of any fracture. MRI examination, as shown, shows that there was complete tearing of the posterior lateral bundle of the ACL with some residual fibers intact in the anterior medial bundle. The MCL showed that there was mild laxity but no obvious tear. He had an intact LCL as well as PCL with no signs of any meniscal injury. On diagnostic arthroscopy, the standard anteromedial, anterolateral, and accessory transpatellar portals were established. On arth diagnostic arthroscopy, it was notable for intact cartilage surfaces of the medial and lateral patellar facets and trochlea. No loose bodies were identified. Within the notch, the PCL was noted to be intact. The ACL was inspected. There was evidence of posterolateral bundle tearing. There were some residual fibers of the anteromedial bundle intact, which were preserved throughout the case. On entering the medial compartment with the knee in the valgus position, the meniscus, femoral conda, and tibial plateau were also stable to probing. Additionally, on entering the lateral compartment with the knee in a figure of four position, the lateral meniscus, femoral condyle, and tibial plateau were intact and stable to probing. Attention was now turned to the medial wall of the lateral femoral condyle. Using an orthocare device, the poster lateral bundle center point was outlined, as well as the superior border, the anterior condylar ridge, all done with the knee at 90 degrees of flexion. The bifurcate ridge was similarly outlined. A beef pin was then advanced through the anteromedial portal exiting the distal thigh. This was overdrilled with a 6.5 millimeter diameter drill for a tunnel depth of approximately 35 millimeters. The cortex was then breached with a 4.5 millimeter drill for endobutton preparation. Prior to tunnel drilling, the semitendinosus tendon was harvested in the normal fashion. This was sized for 6.5 millimeter diameter and threaded with a 15 millimeter endo loop. Tension was now turned to the tibial side. The border of the posterior lateral bundle center point was outlined just posterior to the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Through a 3 cm incision proximal to the intermedial tibial portal, a guide pin was then advanced to the center point of the posterior lateral bundle. This was captured with a curette and overdrilled with a 6.5 mm diameter tunnel. The anteromedial bundle fibers were protected throughout this entire time. This completed the ACL tunnel preparation. The graft was now ready to be passed. The graft was pulled across the tibial and femoral tunnels and successfully flipped with the endo button as confirmed with the mini C-arm fluoro device. The knee was then cycled a dozen times. With the knee in full extension, a 7 mm Arthrex peak graft bolt sheath and screw were then placed. Stable fixation was achieved and the distal end of the graft was cut. The ACL reconstruction graft was visualized and was found to be intact and stable. The patient had a stable pivot shift, full range of motion, with several degrees of hyperextension and 145 degrees of flexion.